the off week did the three quarterback idea kind of pop up and you guys ran with it? Yeah, we've been we've been floating some ideas. Uh, really, uh, we are, we're always floating ideas out right. there. But uh, we know that we got uh, a good quarterback room of guys that uh, are good players. So uh, why not get them out in the field and use them a little bit and, and let them uh, take a little part in the action? Is three too many? I don't think so. I think I think they enjoyed it. I think they're enjoying their roles and uh, just getting to get in there and. and uh, be a part of it uh, when, when they're not the starting guy, still getting to get a little taste of the action. So I think it's good for the room. I think it's good for the guys, and uh, everyone seemed to like it. Just as, as you went back and rewatched it and just the execution part of it, I mean, do, did you feel like it, it, it came off the way that you guys wanted it to as far as getting guys on the field in a timely yeah, I fashion? Think, I think so. I think the absolutely the uh, – the mechanics of doing that, that's something you worry about. You worry about, you know, a different cadence from three different quarterbacks that the old line has to listen to. Uh, but those guys worked really hard at it uh, all week, especially with the noise at Iowa. Um, and it really went off without a hitch, the, the subbing in and out and knowing who was going in. And, uh, that was something that we did talk a lot about and made sure that we had that uh, dialed up before we went out there. What's the advantage for you guys doing this? You know, I think uh, – I think each guy has a little bit of a little different element that they bring, um, and like I said, we got a good quarterback room of, of good players, and um, it's, it seems a little bit of a waste to make them sit out, uh, you know, every game and not not get in there and let them showcase some of their skills. So um, I think it's a good change up, and, and uh, I think it keeps everybody into it too. I think I think the team likes it. I imagine you've only scratched the surface, Brian. You can do a lot of different things off all this, right? Yeah, I think the the uh, possibilities are limitless. I mean, uh, we've got to be creative and, and think of uh, think of things that we can do, and that's that's our job to make sure that we put those guys in places to uh, be able to be successful and to to uh, score some points. What are the challenges of just managing all the different possibilities? You know, not getting caught up in you know trying to do too much with these guys and making sure you know you're yeah, we you know we're always we've always been a high volume offense, so we've run a lot of plays, practice a lot of plays, make our guys learn a lot of football. Uh, so this is just another element that, that we're putting in there. I think uh, really the probably the challenging part is uh, on the play caller, knowing when to use it and and uh, how to make it transition as you're calling the plays. And I think Jeff did a really good job of that uh, on Saturday. He said he was pretty stressed out or his brain was working there's a lot of things, there's, No, there's a lot of things to think about uh, when you have you know multiple guys going in, multiple packages. Uh, when do you use it? Um, you know, because there's only so many plays in the game, and, and we have a lot of options. But uh, I thought he did a great job uh, calling the game Saturday. What was your kind of role in the whole thing? From the I'm, always, I'm always just assisting and trying to, <laughs> to uh, you know, help remind him of things that maybe he wanted to get to that uh, he hadn't got to yet that, that uh, we were able to use. As far as use, Brian, was it just gut feel? Was there plans to use guys in certain situations? Uh, they each have a certain, you know, they each have a certain type of package. I think, uh, you know, we try to trying to build it to their specific strengths, and uh, they each have a little bit of different strengths. So uh, that's kind of how we're trying to do it. I mean, uh, you got 30 yards out of Jack and Austin in the running game. I mean, how, how much, when you guys have struggled to run the ball this year traditionally, yeah. how much of a bonus was that? I think it does help. And when you can run the quarterback, you get an extra block or you get an extra hat. Uh, so that does have – uh, somewhat of an advantage, you know, as you study other teams, guys that, that have quarterbacks that can run, that's something that, that they use their advantage and the extra blocker. Uh, so if we're able to use that a little bit with those guys and, and mix in some other things with them to keep teams honest, I, I think it can be a positive. Obviously with the, the week, you have the week off, you know, to practice this and then the week leading up to the game, just what what did you need to see from those three, you know, rotating in and out to really feel comfortable? Uh, well, I, along with you know, and I think, uh, really, I think when, <laughs> I think when, um, when Aiden, uh, you know, when Aiden became the starter, we always had in our mind that we had some guys that were a little bit more mobile behind them that, uh, you know, we might want to use a two, two QB system. Um, and then as we got going, we put Austin in that first game. We said, well, why not just, why not just do all, you know, why not put all three in? So uh, we just started to build that a little bit. And those guys can do it. We knew they can do it. Um, you know, we just never really seen anybody do three before, but we said, why not? Let's start it. And I, I imagine in your playing days that playing three on one drive never happened. I, 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 don't, I don't think I've seen it, no.
Uh, I haven't seen it yet. Three different quarterbacks on three successive plays. Yeah, yeah. No, I know. We uh, it was fun. I thought I think it was fun. I think uh, I think everybody enjoyed it. Um, Austin mentioned that you guys had had a 24-hour rule. Kind of. Uh, could you just uh, give me a little in, a little insight? What exactly is that? 24-hour rule of, of after a game. Yep, after I think what you know, positive or or negative. You know, max 24 hours to to celebrate, enjoy, think about the game, or to wallow in what happened if it was a negative experience. You got to put it behind you, 24 hours, put it behind you, and we got to move on to the next one. As Coach said, it's a one-game season uh, every week. Uh, so now we got to get our focus totally on Wisconsin. It doesn't, doesn't really matter what happened last week. Speaking of Wisconsin, what are some of the keys that you're preaching to the team this week? Um, well, they're really good on defense. Their front is, is, uh, is really good. Um, and on offense, they're going to try to ball control. It's much like, much like Iowa. They're going to try to hold the ball. So we need to take advantage of our opportunities when we have them. Uh, we need to be efficient on offense. We can't have mistakes. Uh, really, all the, all the same things we kind of preach for most Big Ten teams that we're playing that have that style of ball control. And, and um, you know, we just got to be efficient. We got to execute. You, you go from Iowa, a team you've had success against, you know, in the past to Wisconsin, who, you know, this team hasn't beaten in 18 years now. Just what are some of the, like, keys, like you kind of mentioned, to kind of flipping that script, you know, this year? You know, I, I, we can't think about that too much, I think. Yeah. Um, like it's a one-game season, so we're, we're all in focused on Wisconsin. Um, and I know in the back of our minds and in the back of the players' mind, they know that we haven't beat them, uh, but in a while, so... Um, we just got to come out, execute, and play at a high level. And we know uh, they're going to be a, a tough opponent, and we got to be ready for that.